Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Brooke and you look lovely today. Y'all, y'all, y'all. This is my very first booktube video. We're excited. We got a professional camera. We got lighting. It's like crazy. So for this first video, I thought I would talk a little bit about me, my reading history slash current situation, and then kind of give you a rundown of all the books I've read so far this year. It's kind of like a hint of my reading tastes. So you can see if we like match up or not. I don't know. This is Tinder now. <laughs> so as I said, my name is Brooke. I recently graduated in May from the University of Oklahoma with a triple bachelor's in English, International Studies, and Women's and Gender Studies. So as you can imagine, that experience was very intense. Um, and I did not have a lot of time to really read in the last four years, which caused me a lot of worry during that time, especially like when I was a freshman, I took so many books with me to my dorm and I didn't have time to read them. The second semester of my freshman year, I took like 20 plus hours. I don't even remember, it was a lot. And I just, I, I didn't have time to read. And I had to come to kind of terms with that, that, you know, we're in college now, this is the goal. We can read afterwards. And it wasn't like I wasn't reading anything, it's just everything I was reading was for class. And so I was gaining a lot of literary knowledge, but not really reading for fun or what I necessarily would have chosen for myself. Before that, I read a ton. I've been collecting books since, I don't know, like the middle of elementary school for a long time. A long time. So right now, all of those books are in storage. Hopefully they will be out soon and I will have them on the shelves and I'm gonna make a video kind of showing that. But for now, this is our lovely background that I've made. Ooh. So I started watching booktube in high school, but I never really had the time to really commit to booktube with how rigorous my high school curriculum was and then getting three bachelors at the same time. So I'm really excited now that I have finished school and won't be going back for the foreseeable future. Uh, to really try. I've always wanted to be a part of this community and now I finally have the chance. So without further ado, let's get to the 23 books I've read so far this year. Okay, so the first book I read at the beginning of the year was Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, which you can see is by this lovely sticker here I got from Half Price Books, We Stand. Jason Reynolds was an author I had been wanting to check out and this is either his newest book or very close to his newest book, so I was seeing it a lot of places. When I picked it up, y'all y'all this novel is in verse and your girl is a sucker for novels in verse i have always always loved them so i picked this up for my first book of the year i think i basically read it in like one night it was pretty good i'm gonna keep it because i'm a big proponent in unhauling books that you don't really like also y'all i just a minute ago in between filming like took this cover off and i don't know if you're gonna be able to see this i'm gonna try can you see it yes like embossed on there, it's like numbers counting down. I'm really into like under the jacket book art right now. So the second book I read this year was Stain by A.G. Howard. My best friend actually got me this for my birthday, which is in early February. So as you can see, I read that book in January. Didn't read this book until February. There's a big gap in my reading at during school because I was still in school at the beginning of this year. I wanted this book because I thought it was a Rapunzel retelling. Uh, which it actually is not. It's technically a princess in the pea retelling, but it has a lot of other fairy tale stories and elements mixed in. This is a standalone. It's not part of A.G. Howard's, I think it's called, is it on here? Splintered series, uh, which I think is an Alice in Wonderland retelling. A lot of people think that because it kind of has the same color. I think they're just doing a branding thing for her. But I pretty much enjoyed this. It took me a while to get into it at the beginning because the writing style is kind of strange because she's trying to emulate a fairy tale. But I did really enjoy this and it's actually on my list of book inspo for the novel that I'm currently outlining. The third book I read was On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. This is a graphic novel. Um, it's kind of monotone. There is some color. I really like graphic novels in color. I'm not a big fan of like black and white. This is kind of like a dual timeline story with the same uh, main character. Part of it takes place when she's in boarding school and it's about her romance with her girlfriend and then the other part takes place like several years later when she's gotten her first job with this space crew that goes to different planets and renovates ruins for new use I guess. Um, I really liked this. There is not a single male character in this book. Um, 
Every character is a woman except for one character who identifies as non-binary. I didn't realize that until a big chunk of the way into the book and then I had to go back and look at like every single little mini character that they'd show until I could affirm that what I thought was true was true. They don't explain that. They don't say whether there are just no men or whether they're not shown. I feel like men have to exist for the concept of non-binary to be a thing. The next book I read is What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. I haven't read anything else by Becky Albertalli, but I have read History Is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera and I really loved it. I also enjoyed this. Uh, I've now bought all of Adam Silvera's books to read, but he's also coming out with new fantasy. I follow him on Twitter. <laughs> But I really like this. It was really cute, fluffy. The next book I read was Love That Dog by Sharon Creech. I actually read this for the children's literature class that I took last semester. Um, I loved this book. It's so adorable. Again, it's in verse. Oh, I picked a good page. Haha, -ha, concrete poems. But it was in verse and it's just, it's a middle grade book about this boy who's dealing with loss in his family and it's just so cute. It was so precious and it made me want to cry. The next book I read was Autobiography by Christina Lauren. I thought this one was going to be a cute little sweet contemporary like what if it's us but it's actually very hard hitting. It's about uh, a male-male relationship. The one main character is bisexual, the other one is gay, but the gay character is also Mormon and it has to do a lot with religion and how do you like grapple with your religion when it opposes your sexuality and when your family opposes your sexuality and so it was very rough. It was not as cutesy as I was hoping. Also the bisexual main character is taking part in a class where he has to write a novel which was another thing about this book that really excited me because I love it when books are about books <laughs> and like that was a part of it and that played a point in the plot but it wasn't as big as I was hoping for. This was still cute even though it was heart-wrenching and I did enjoy it. The next book I read was The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace, which is a collection of poems. At the end of 2018, I read another book by Amanda Lovelace, uh, not in this series, I think it's called To Make Monsters Out of Girls or something like that. I don't know, it's in that Bennett Books over there. Um, but I really, really enjoyed that one. And I love the concept of this and I read it and I really enjoyed this one as well. And then I read The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, which is again, uh, you guessed it, a novel in verse. This book has been getting a lot of hype. It's about an Afro-Latina main character, um, which you don't see represented that often in literature, unfortunately, so I had to get this one. Also, it's about a girl who writes, and as we've already established, I'm into that. Um, I really enjoyed this as well. I, I don't really know if I've read any books this year that I didn't enjoy, so... And then I had to pick up, of course, The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one by Amanda Lovelace, which is kind of a sequel to The Princess Saves Herself in this one, as much as poetry can be a sequel. Um, I also really enjoy this one. This one I felt was a little darker. There are some poems that are more scenes that are kind of spread out, and they're pretty dark. The next book I read... We're just gonna say that phrase so many times in this video. But the next book I read was Dear Martin by Nick Stone, who is again another author that I've been wanting to check out before I read this. Um, this book was really good. There's a very sad part in the middle, and while I was reading this book, my best friend actually texted me right after that scene, and she was like, do you wanna go get ice cream? And I was like, girl, I need the ice cream right now. I need it. And I went to a book festival, and I met Nick Stone, and I told her that story, and she's such a lovely lady and she signed my book with ice cream was a good plan the next book i read i borrowed from work so i'll put a picture somewhere but it's the island of sea women by lisa c i had to read this because i was the book club facilitator for the month and it was the barnes and noble book club pick it follows this friendship between these two korean women who are divers and when i say divers i don't mean like oxygen tanks scuba masks like these ladies hold their breath go underwater and like dive without air tanks like it blew my mind but it follows their relationship from i think it's around the right before world war ii like through the korean war and like all the stuff it's very historical i really enjoyed it and i was glad that if i had to read a book for the book club uh, that it was this one. Uh, at the time I was very stressed out about it because I was in school and I didn't know if I was gonna have time to read it. But I read it, I really enjoyed it. I don't know if I'll check anything else out by Lisa C just because she doesn't write the kind of stuff I normally read, but I did like this one. Then after that I read two books 
by Jacqueline Woodson for a project for my children's literature class. I also don't own these. I borrowed them from my school library, although I may buy them because Jacqueline Woodson is a national treasure. And they were from the notebooks of Melon and Son, and I hadn't meant to tell you this. Melon and Son uh, involves a boy who journals, as the title might suggest, and he is coming to terms with the fact that his mother has recently started dating a woman. Ha! Ha! It's a middle grade. It's great. I recommend. As I said, uh, Jacqueline Woodson's amazing. It was great. I loved it. I hadn't meant to tell you this. It's about the friendship between a higher class black girl and a poor white girl who are both dealing with the loss of their mothers in different ways. They are also trying to figure out what to do about the fact that the white girl, I don't remember their names, my bad, is uh, experiencing child abuse. Then I read Be Brave by J.M. Farkas, which is actually a blackout poem. It is a feminization of Beowulf. And like, as an English major and a person who loves literature, like that just, that just, it's everything. But look at it. So I really enjoyed this one. It says on the back that it's gonna be the first in a series, so I'm gonna watch out for that and hopefully collect a ton of these and love them all. The next book I read was, I wrote this for you by Ian S. Thomas, which is this collection, oh, this, this is one of the sideways pages, which is a collection of pictures and poems. This is sad story time, because you may have noticed all these poetry books and they're all published by this company, uh, Andrews McMeal Universal. I actually interviewed for a global publishing summer internship with them. I made it all the way to the last interview and then didn't get it. But while I was in the interview process, I went to my Barnes and Noble and I picked up a bunch of books that I was interested in from their publishing company to kind of do some research and fill it out. Um, so Amanda Lovelace, I love her anyway, but she's part of that, so is the Be Brave, so is this. Now, uh, this one I didn't enjoy as much as the other one. There were some good pieces in here, but I think maybe the pictures and the poems aren't, their, their connection isn't like visible to a brain like mine. I don't know. It may also be that I took a giant gap in the middle of reading this because I was moving, um, and so I may have missed some of it. I might try rereading it before I decide to unhaul it. Next I read, I'm gonna pull it out y'all. I'm gonna pull it out. I hate box sets. The future reference, I hate box sets. The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. Of course, this was a reread for me. I think I started reading these in like the fifth grade. But I went to go see The Lightning Thief, the musical in Tulsa at the end of May. So of course I had to reread this beforehand because it's been so long. Also, side note, I recently bought new copies of these because my original copies are from when I was in elementary school and they are mismatched and beat up. And this box set, is on sale at Barnes and Noble in the bargain section for 20 bucks. You get all five of them and the uh, Greek Gods book for that much. I'm probably gonna get rid of this Greek Gods book and the box. Um, not because I necessarily don't want this book, although I haven't decided, but mainly because if I get this book, I want two that matches because there's like the Greek Gods and the Greek Heroes and I would rather have two that go together. Also, I hate box sets. I hate dealing with them and I hate the way they look on the shelf. So I kind of want to get rid of the box. Although I am kind of glad I bought this box set because I don't really like paperback books. Sorry, um, I'm a hardcover person. But these paperbacks are actually like kind of reinforced. I guess they kind of wanted to make them stronger since you have to pull them in and out of the box set. But yeah, so they're stronger than normal paperbacks, which is great. Then in May, I actually went to WizCon with my friend Adrian. It is a feminist sci-fi fantasy convention that takes place every year. And every year they give out this award called the Tip Tree Award. And my friend Adrian uh, translates Spanish fiction into English and a story that she translated actually won, so then they gave her an honorary award, so we went. Part of the conference is about raising money for the next year's Tip Tree Award, and to do that, they have an auction, and some of the things that they sell are ARCs. And now, I know that there's a big thing in the reading community slash writing community right now about uh, ARCs are free, and I really agree with that. However, they were like $3.00 and it was to support a literary convention, so I was like okay with paying them. And so the first one of those I read was Once in Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. I had my eye on this book already, and I figured for $3, why not get it, check it out. This is a queer, gender-bent, King Arthur retelling in space. Like, what else do you need to know? I really enjoyed it. There were a couple things that I was kind of in eh about, like the romance feels very insta-lovey and there are a few things like that. Um, I've been seeing very mixed reviews for this, but I do know that there's already going to be a second one. This ended on a cliffhanger, so there better be, 
just saying. And I will read it and I am looking forward to it. Next I read Aisha at Last by Uzma Jalaluddin, which I had actually not heard of before I went to the conference, but when I was browsing the books on the table I saw it. And this is what it says at the top, a modern day Muslim pride and prejudice. Again, what more do you need to know? What more do you need to know? I really enjoyed it. I will probably be getting a finished copy of this and the last one um, at some point, but do recommend. It was cute. Also, side note, I have this uh, really bad habit of when I'm really enjoying a book but I get tired of reading, but I want to keep knowing what the story is, that I start skimming and then I read the rest of the book anyway afterwards, but like I skim and I spoil everything for myself and this is one of those books that I did it with. So you know it was good, um, just saying. Next I read this big boy right here, Sky Without Stars by Jessica Brody and Joanne Rendell. Um, this is supposed to be a Les Mis retelling in space. And usually that would have instantly gotten me. Um, I've never read Les Mis, but uh, in high school French, we rewatched that movie so many times, so I know the story, in the, in, you know, basically. But I have read one other book by Jessica Brody before. It was one of her contemporaries, and it did not live up to what I wanted it to be, so I was a little hesitant. But when I saw it for $3, I was like, let me try it out. Let me give it a chance. Why not? And I really, really liked this. Like, I liked the writing, I liked this kind of storytelling. We follow three main characters. This isn't a full Les Mis retelling, despite its size. It starts toward the end of the story, and we follow the teen characters in the book, slash movie in my case. <laughs> the front cover says this is the first book in a new series, and I honestly think that there's so much potential for this world because there's a whole system of new planets, and this one only took place on one planet, and when you get kind of snips of the politics, I don't know if they're going to expand that much, if they're just going to continue to follow these characters, but they could do so much of this, and I would read it. Then next I read The Sea of Monsters and The Titan's Curse, both by Rick Riordan. This is books two and three in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, which I had restarted at the end of May. I basically decided that I'm going to reread all of Rick Riordan's books and then read the Rick Riordan Presents books because I've missed a lot of his newer books. I haven't read The Trials of Apollo or Magnus Chase because again, college. <laughs> but I love Rick Riordan. I love how he represents diversity and how he uses his platform to promote diverse authors. I just love him and I want to get back into this and I want to do it right. Side note, there is a group of booktubers who are currently doing a kind of like Rick Riordan reread along. Um, I will link that in the description. I think it's called Reading Riordan, if I remember right. They're doing the Sea of Monsters this month, so if you wanted to get on, you're not that far behind. Next I read Don't Date Rosa Santos by Nina Marino. This is another book that's been getting a lot of hype, especially on Twitter. I was kind of not really feeling it for some reason. I don't really know why, but when I saw it there for $3, I went ahead and picked it up, thought I'd give it a shot, and it was really cute, and I really enjoyed it. I could see how this would mean a lot to someone who has cultural connections to the family that's represented in here, who are Cuban-American. I also really enjoyed the exploration of generational women relationships in this book. That's something I've been thinking a lot about in my own family recently, and so I enjoyed reading it. And the last book I finished this year, the 23rd, book, finally, I'm sorry that this video is so long, is We Hunt the Flame by Hofsva Faisal. Now this was the YA book club pick for Barnes & Noble for the month of July. Uh, this has also been getting a lot of hype, and I don't know if it's because I had to read it for work and I wasn't really like in the mood for this or what, but I don't think I enjoyed it quite as much as other people. Like, don't get me wrong, Hofsva Faisal, her writing is like top notch, and I really like the end, and I think that ending will push me to read the next one, but I don't think I loved it as much as a lot of people did. And then to kind of just throw this in there at the end, I'm currently reading Heartless by Marissa Meyer, which is a retelling of Alice in Wonderland that focuses on the Queen of Hearts and how she became the Queen of Hearts. I love Marissa Meyer. She's one of my author by authors. We stand her so hard. And so I'm glad I'm finally getting to get to this. All right, so that's me. That's the 23 books I've read so far this year and the one book I'm currently reading. Let me know if you've read any of these books and thank you for watching.